Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I am going to show you how I finish uh, my cross stitch ornaments, um, similar to one like this. Um, I took a course at my local needle workshop uh, about a year ago and pretty much everything I'm gonna show you is what I learned from that course. Um, okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is, um, oh, and we're gonna be finishing this ornament today, just as an FYI, I'm just gonna put it over here for a minute. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is um, pick out a template. Now with this method, you can use um, pretty much any shape, um, you want to use. You, it, it's not limited to circles, squares, rectangles. Um, so some of the places you can get templates is um, Amazon, Michaels, and I got these pre-made templates from Michaels. So there's ovals, circles, and then um, different size rectangles. So that's one place, and I know you can get um, something somewhere on Amazon. Uh, the second place that um, I go to for templates is I use my Cricut Maker. Um, and the reason why I like the Cricut Maker is I can um, just take a simple SVG file from the internet. Um, you can also get hundreds of um, shape SVG files from Etsy. I think I, I got 100 files for I think $3, so it's, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, and the reason why I like using my Cricut is, um, I can, uh, resize the, um, shape to the exact size I need for my ornament. So that's my go-to. And this is the one that I'll be using today. Another place that you can get, um, a template is by taking your stitched piece and putting it in a photocopier. Um, face down and taking a photocopy of it and basically using your stitched piece to create a template so you could um, you know take a straight ruler and basically just make a customized shape using the photocopy and this is a photocopy I took of that piece um, so, so there's a lot of options um, and it's trying to focus. There's a lot of options um, for finding templates, um, but I'm gonna be using this one, the one I made on my Cricut. Um, so then what you wanna do is you wanna take whatever template you've chosen and you want to trace that onto a piece of map board. Um, and you only wanna make one tracing of your template on the, on the map board using the template. Um, I get my map board in bulk on Amazon, the 16 by 20 sheets, um, but you can also get map board on, um, uh, or you can also get map board at Michael's. Um, if you go to your local frame shop, they may have um, the blanks um, from their um, mats when they cut out mats for custom framing. Um, you know, they may be able to, you know, sell those to you at a, at a discounted price. Um, so you want to trace your, your template out onto the mat board once and cut it out. And then what you want to do is you want to label that. And for the sake of time, I, I've already done that. You want to label the, the piece that you just cut out, trace and cut out using your template. You want to label that. The front and this is very important so label that the front and then what I do is I put markers on all four sides and that will be important when we look at placing placement of our ornament a little bit later then what you want to do is you want to take the piece that you just cut out and you want to trace a second uh, shape on your map board using the piece that you just cut out. You don't wanna use the template for your second piece. You wanna use the piece you just traced and cut out. And the reasoning for that, and again, for the sake of time, I already did that, 
So once you've done that, kind of label it the back. And the reason why you don't use your template for the back, and it's, there we go, is you want your back to be just slightly, oh so slightly larger than your front. And you, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it is, I can see it in person and it's just a slight smidgen bigger than the front. And the reason why you do that is on your front piece, you're gonna have three layers of fabric. It doesn't like to focus. Let me get it to focus here. You're, on your front piece, you are gonna have three layers of fabric. And I'll, I'll show you when we get to that, that section. On your back piece, you're only gonna have two layers of fabric. So you need your back piece of map board just to be slightly bigger to compensate for that so that when we put the front and the back together they line up pretty much perfectly okay so once you've cut out your front and your back and you've put the markers on what you want to do is you want to get your foam now let's talk about foam for a second I my preference is quarter inch foam and that's the thickness and that is what I used in, in this ornament. So it's a nice thickness. This is not particularly easy to find online. Um, it's actually, I've never been able to find it online. I have to go to a foam store to get this thickness of foam. Now, the other type of foam that's readily, readily available online, you can get on Amazon, eBay, is half inch foam. I've never made an ornament, ornament with half inch foam, but I have seen them finish with half inch foam and they're just a bit chunkier. They're just a little bit. So if you can kind of picture, um, and I mean, this gets compressed too when you make your ornament, so it's not this thick, but it's just slightly chunkier. It still looks quite nice. My preference is the quarter inch foam. If you don't want any real puffiness to your ornament, I suggest using quilt batting. So you can, you can use quilt batting as well. So for this ornament that I'm going to be making today, I'm gonna to be taking my template and I'm gonna be tracing it um, onto my foam with like a, a permanent marker and cutting it out. And I already did that. I cut out two pieces here. So once you've cut out your foam, we're gonna put this to the side. We wanna choose our backing fabric. So you're gonna need, for this step, you're gonna need a backing fabric, and this is the one that I've chosen today. You're gonna to wanna to need, you're gonna need um, broadcloth, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about broadcloth and why we need this in a second. And let me just get it to focus here. There we go. Okay, and you're also going to need interfacing. And the interfacing that I use is this Pelon SF101. And I get this on Amazon. I think I got, I don't know if it was three yards or four yards. I paid like $20 for three or four yards. And it looks like this, it's like a thin, um, it's a very light interfacing. And you're gonna want to um, iron on interfacing to a piece of your broadcloth and a piece of your backing fabric. Do not put interfacing on your stitch piece. Do not put any interfacing on your stitch piece. Okay, so let's just talk about broadcloth for a minute. The reason that we use broadcloth, so the broadcloth is going to go underneath um, the ornament. It's gonna be the layer underneath the ornament. And the reason why we use the broadcloth is that foam over time um, yellows. It, it discolors as it's exposed to air. And if you were to just put your stitch piece over top of the um, 
um, over top of the foam without broadcloth. Number one, you're exposing it to more air because, I mean, this isn't a good example. This is Monaco. But if this if this was Ada, this um, if this was stitched on Ada, the holes are larger and um, the foam is going to ex get exposed to air, more air over time. And it'll yellow. And if, if your fabric is white, and especially if it's Ada, you're going to see... Um, the yellow through the the uh, stitch piece also the more foam is exposed to air over time it will disintegrate um, which will you know destroy the ornament so that the broadcloth just basically extends the life of your ornament and it extends the life of the foam you you're by all means you can skip that step um, but um, it it you know, in my opinion, if you want your ornament to last, you know, I would just take the extra few minutes to put the broadcloth on. Another reason why you, you use broadcloth is, is this foam is blue. <laughs> so again, if you have a white ornament, um, the, the blue foam is going to show through. So for the most part, I use uh, a cream uh, broadcloth. And for this ornament, it's, it's going to work. If you had an ornament on black fabric or like a dark blue fabric, I would suggest finding a broadcloth that's closer to that darker color. Um, also, if you had, um, if, if I was finishing an ornament that was on Ada, even like a light blue Ada, I might try to find a broadcloth that matched that color because Ada, the weave is is more open and you could see this this ornament here is on Ada. So I can I can see through the holes. So if you were using, you know, like if you if this was blue, this background and you use the white broadcloth, the white will show through. Okay. So once you've added the interfacing and just follow the the um manufacturer's instructions with the interfacing make sure the the bumpy side is um, on top of your fabric make sure you're not ironing the bumpy side because you'll you'll wreck your iron so once you've chosen your fabric put a piece of inf interfacing on your uh, broadcloth and your backing fabric what you want to do is you want to take your template and you want to trace, so for the sake of time, I, I put my interfacing on my backing fabric. And now what you want to do is you want to take your um, template and you want to trace that template around um, on your backing fabric. And remember those little markers that we made here? You want to... After you've traced your template onto your fabric, you want to add those markings um, to each side outside where you've traced the template. So it'll kind of it'll look like this. Okay. So you're going to do that on your backing fabric and your broadcloth. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut around in like a zigzaggy motion um, and I do I leave about what is that quarter to a half inch around and do, it doesn't have to be perfect you just need to just do kind of a zigzaggy um, cutting job around um, the ornament do not cut on the line go about you know quarter to a half inch out so I've already done that on my broadcloth piece. Okay, so once you've done that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, we're gonna go back to our map board. You're gonna take your pieces of map board and you're gonna glue your foam onto the side that doesn't have any writing on it. And how I do that is I use, um, it's called Eileen's Tacky Spray. You can get it on Michael's, you can get it on Amazon. It's, it's readily available. 
Um, and I also, to do this, I take an old um, gift box and I stick, um, oops. I stick it in the gift box because it has the lips on the end. So if you have any spray from the um, from the uh, t um, tacky spray, um, it kind of just kind of keeps it contained. So I'm just going to hold this out here and do that quick. And you just want a light layer. You don't want it saturated. Sorry, I was off camera while I was doing that. So again, it's just a light layer. Oops. And you're going to stick your foam right on top just like that. And again, you're not going to do anything with it at this point. Um, we're just going to let that sit and dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut um, my backing fabric out in the motion um, using kind of that zigzaggy pattern. Um, And I mean, there's no exact science to it. You just kind of go kind of go back and forth. Now you can use with the, this, with this technique, you can pretty much use any shape you want. Um, however, the more intricate the shape, um, the more work you're going to have to do to get rid of the bulk when you're um, basically adhering the ornament to the mat board. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute when we get to that, we get to that section. So, so, oh, I'm out of frame. So that does not help you guys. So this is what I'm doing. All right, I will. So again, I'm going back and forth in the zigzaggy motion. You want to make sure that you don't um, cut out your little notches that you made. Just cut that out there. Okay. Okay, so there's my notched out backing fabric. So now, given the, the, um, the foam time to dry, so now what you wanna do is, you can see we've got some overhang here. I, I don't want overhang with the foam. So I'm just gonna trim around, get rid of all the, the overhang that's on the, uh, and I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty because it's getting covered, so, you know, So there, I've gotten rid of all the overhang. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my back first. I'm gonna do my back first because um, if you screw up the back, who cares? It's a piece of backing fabric. You can, you know, you can do it again fairly inexpensively. So we practice on our back and then our broadcloth. And then when we get to our ornament, 
um, we've already had some practice on on the the backing fabric and the broadcloth. So, okay, sorry about that. I had to take a little break. Um, okay, so we're gonna take our back, and what we're gonna do is we're going to spray. Sorry, let me just make some room for myself. We're going to spray this side, um, not the side with the foam, the, the mat board side with spray adhesive. And you, you don't want it saturated, but you want enough on so that um, your fabric's gonna stick. So, um, I would say don't saturate, but don't go lightly, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna stick this on. Uh, part of my mat board that is not sticky. I'm just gonna go off to the side here for a minute. Okay, so then what I do is I take a spare piece of foam and in the center you just kind of want to dab the center because um, this is where you're going to put your hand in a minute and you don't want your hand getting all sticky. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that there for a minute just to let it, um, just let, to let the, the glue dry just a smidge. I don't want it to, to fully dry. And while we're letting that dry, I'm just going to talk about these other things that we're going to use um, during this part of the process. So you're going to want, oops, and I'm sticking to the, you're going to want a pair of very pointy scissors. Um, these are uh, Cricut brand, um, but you can get, you can get these, you can get pointy scissors anywhere. And you want to make sure they're scissors you don't mind getting glue on. Um, you're also going to need a screwdriver. It doesn't have to be this little tiny screwdriver. It can be any flathead screwdriver. You're also going to want this tool. Now this is um, something that I got um, at Michael's in the jewelry making section and it's like a pair of pliers but if you can see there's no little ridges in these pliers this is smooth right here um, it's used in jewelry making I don't know what it's used for um, but it's it's basically like needle nose pliers without the the ridges um, so so make sure there's no ridges because it will damage your ornament if you have the ridges so a pair of pliers that are smooth you're going to need a glue gun. And I have it here with my handy dandy Paw Patrol plate. Um, and then you're also going to need a flat edge. So what I do is I just take scraps of my mat board and I just cut it and make sure it has a long flat edge. And that's what you're going to need. Those few things the glue gun, the pliers, the screwdriver, the scissors, and the mat board is what you're gonna need for this um, section of the process. Okay, so we've left, our, our mat board has gotten tacky. So what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna take our ornament, the back backing, fa backing fabric of our ornament, and we're gonna put it um, face down onto the table we're working on. Then you're gonna use the little notches that we drew um, on the fabric to line up our um, mat board with the foam on it. So once it's lined up, yeah, that looks good. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press 
and compress the foam in the middle. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just wrap. Oh, and my interface didn't fuse very well. well it's gonna make it tricky. Okay, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna put a new piece of interfacing on. Just hold on a second. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties there. Okay, so I'm gonna reline up my ornament. I'm gonna press and compress the foam down. And then I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna put the little tiny notches that we made earlier. Press it down on the mat board. And this was what I was talking about when um, I was saying you want enough glue so that your material will stick to the mat board, but you don't want it so saturated that you have kind of a puddle of glue you're trying to stick something to. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it looks, it's going to look. It's not going to look very good right now because, um, you know, we have to do kind of the fine tuning when we go back with our scissors. Mm. Yeah, I didn't get, I'm just going to put a little bit more spray adhesive on this corner here. bit of spray adhesive oh, and it's trying to focus Got a little bit of spray adhesive right on the fabric there but I don't think it's gonna show so I'm gonna keep going okay okay so now your ornament is gonna look like this which is not what we want but the plus side of using spray adhesive is, is you can peel the fabric back. You can't do it a ton of times, but you can peel it back and stick it back down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel just a few layers back. And I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to start to trim focusing issues here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see. I start to trim away the fabric. the edge but not quite you can put it you can, again you can put your ornament down on the table and compress the foam and once I've gone about you know about two inches take the needle nose pliers there's like you probably can't see it. There's little ridge bumps here, and I just, you just sort of flatten it out. You press it down and flatten it out. So, 
you can see I've trimmed the fabric back, all the ridge bumps are, are out. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're going to run a thin layer along that edge that you've just cut down. Just a thin layer. And then you want to take your flat edge and you're going to again press the foam down and you're going to scrape it. So you're going to flatten it out. So basically you've sealed the fabric to the board but there's no bulk from the, the glue gun. So I'm basically going to go the full perimeter around the ornament um, and basically cut a cut away the excess. I'll do it one more time and then I'll pause the video and, and finish it because you, you don't want to see me do the whole thing. So again, I'm going to trim the excess. I'm going to stick it back down on the spray adhesive. There. I don't think I had enough spray adhesive on the edges. bit more, tiny bit more spray adhesive. let it tack up a little bit. Press it down. Look at all the little bumps. I'm take the glue gun and just put a thin, thin layer on that section. Down on the foam, scrape it off. Now, if you do end up getting chunks of uh, hot glue on the back, because because basically we want that we want this as flat as possible, you can take your screwdriver, just scrape the the hot glue off. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, complete the perimeter. Of, of this, just again pulling the um, focusing issues there, pulling the material back, trimming it, getting all the bumps out, and I'm going to do that with this piece and I'm also going to do it on the front with the, the broadcloth piece. So um, I'll, I'll be back in a bit and I'll show you the remainder of the process. Okay, I'm back and I've completed um, putting or adhering the fabric um, to the back of the map board on my back and I also did the broadcloth on my front. And one thing I wanted to just point out earlier I had said um, that you can use any shape with this process which is the case. Um, however, um, the more turns and dips you have, the more finicky um, this process is adhering the um, fabric to the back of your mat board. Um, so pretty much when I get down to these, um, I'm having focusing issues today. Focus. So when I get to these corners I pretty much have to trim the fabric down to almost nothing before I put the um, hot glue over top and then s just sort of smooth it over. You're essentially almost scraping the hot glue off you just want a very very thin layer 
to, to seal it down. Um, but as you can see, there's no like basically lumps or bumps. Um, and the, the great thing about the spray adhesive is, is while you're working on one side, you know, the other side's not popping off while you're trying to, you know, fix the one side. And that was always my issue with ornaments is I'd use, um, like a tacky glue. And as I was pulling and, and messing about with one side, the other side would pop off. Or, so, um, the spray adhesive is really good with that. Now, mind you, once you do put the spray adhesive on, you can't just, um, obviously you, you have to work quickly. I mean, not, I mean, it's not going to dry in like fully dry in 10 minutes, but, um, you don't want to leave it like for hours, just sort of sitting with the spray adhesive. You want to do all your adjusting right then and there. Um, okay. So we have the, we have the back, we have the front completed. Um, they're sandwiching, sand, the sandwich is quite nice. And you see how I, um, what I mean by the back needing to be a bit bigger once we put the the stitched piece. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so you can see that the back piece is a little bit larger than the front. So once we put the ornament um, on the front, those should line up pretty perfectly. I've, I've found that it lines up pretty well. Okay, so we're going to set those aside for a minute. Now what we're going to do um, is we're going to position our ornament on or decide how we want our ornament positioned on our front piece. And the one thing that I like to use um, and I use this for all sorts of different um, different projects. This is a light table, and this is just a kid's light table. It's a Crayola light table. You can get them on Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive, and they're you know easy to find. Um, but these are great tools for anyone who crafts. Um, if you do punch needle, I would. I don't punch needle, but I would assume that this would be great for transferring uh, patterns onto to your um, onto your cloth. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, and I'm sorry it's upside down for you. Um, I'll flip it around to show you. I'm going to just take my ornament. I'm going to take the front of my ornament. I'm just going to set it down on the light table. And then using the light table, um, because I can kind of see where the edges of, of my map board is, I can kind of position or see where I want my ornament to go. So I can make sure it's perfectly centered. Um, alternatively, you could use a window, but it would be kind of hard to hold this up to hold it up to a window and and position it. Mm -hmm. Just want to move it over a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to hold it in that place it in that position and get our pencil or fabric pen whatever make sure you keep it in that position because that's where we want it and I'm gonna check that one more time actually just to make sure it just seemed a little bit fun. Flip it over, and probably at this point your little markers have come off. Just put them back in. 
I do is I just transfer those markers onto my stitch piece. And then I also kind of like to do a faint line. I mean, it's pencil. It's not gonna, gonna show through. If you have white fabric or like a thin linen, I maybe wouldn't trace around. Maybe I would use like an invisible um, fabric marker. Um, but you're gonna need these markers because we're gonna lift this off. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and while I'm here, uh, I should have done this ahead of time, but I'm just gonna trim my threads a little bit. <laughs> um, also, I would make sure your piece is ironed at this point. So now what we're going to do, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray with spray adhesive the back. We're pretty much going to do the exact, actually, no, we're not going to do that yet, sorry. I just want to darken this up a little bit. Um, we have to cut it, cut out our zigzaggy pattern we did with the other things, the other uh, pieces. So, so, yeah, that's enough I can see it. Okay, so again we're gonna do our zigzaggy pattern. And you know, even on the the straight lines, you don't really need a zigzaggy pattern because um, you, you just don't, it's, it's just going to get, it's on the corners that it's, it's important. Okay, sorry about that, I had to pause again. Um, so I ended up cutting around, I did like little notches in the corners and then anywhere where there was a turn I did um, like this kind of zigzag cutting motion. Um, and basically what I'm going to do um, is the same thing that I did with the um, the backing cloth and the bra cloth with one exception and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm going to take my front piece that has the broadcloth on it. Oh, before I go, before I go on, um, just going back to this step, the one thing you want to do after you've glued everything down is just take your little pliers, just go around and just press everything down. It just, just flattens everything. Um, it just makes it nice and flat um, and it smooths out any kind of bumps that you have on the edges. Okay, so, okay, going back to what we're working on now, I'm gonna spray the back of this with spray adhesive, the same way I did with the, the back and the, the broadcloth on the front. So again, just you want enough so that it's it's gonna stick but you don't want it saturated it's kind of a i think i probably saturated it a little bit but. so we take our spare piece of sponge just, and you just want to kind of wipe off the center because you're gonna use put your hand there and you don't want your hand covered in glue. I mean, your hand's going to get glue on it anyway, but this just sops up any extra.
Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because I just want it. I just want it. I want it tacky. I don't want it really, really sticky. Um, and that I'm just gonna trim up. some of these threads. I recommend doing this before you start to put your ornament together. Um, one um, uh, tip um, that I suggest, or one thing I suggest having around um, is um, either bio oil or the oil that you get in like home waxing kits because your hands are gonna get really, really sticky. And um, the bio oil, um, you just rub your fingers with bio oil and then wash them with soap and it'll take the, the glue right off. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did with the, the back and the front. I, I apologize for all the focusing issues. Um, hopefully you're getting the gist of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up all the notches top bottom sides with the notches on my stitch piece make sure they're all lined up and then again I'm going to press down at the center of my ornament and again I'm just gonna wrap the ornament around again the stage it doesn't need to look pretty you just want to get the ornament. Uh, now the one thing too, when you're dealing with linen and even weave, um, you're going to get, your, your fabric is going to start to run. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain. Okay, see what I mean by your hands getting sticky. I'm just gonna go put some bio oil on my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So, got our ornament on the board. Um, um, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna kinda line up the weave. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick um, one basically thread to pull and stretch to to make sure that the weave isn't all wonky on the front. If that makes sense. And that one actually looks pretty good that side. Hmm. So all you do is, if you have to straighten it a bit, you just pull it back and just pull it. So basically I'm just lining up that one weave along the edge of the ornament. Pulling and stretching it. Because presumably if I do that, my weave will be straight on the front. one's a bit off. The front, the bottoms a little bit. And I'm having focusing issues again. Okay. So once I look and see that the weave looks okay, um, looks fine. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm just gonna go around, pull back.
extra bulk here. And once I've gotten all the lumps and bumps out, again, I go about an inch. I pull out the glue gun. Oops. And then I'm going to smooth out the glue from the glue gun. Oops. I like to have it so that it's the less fabric you have on the back, the less bulk there is, so the nicer your ornament will fit to the the front of your ornament will fit to the back. And this is Monaco, so it's it's nice to work with with this method. I, I've done it with linen and linen. It's a bit finicky because the um, the the fabric runs or the the weave tends to fray. That's the word I'm looking for. But that's why you don't want the interfacing on the back of your uh, stitch piece because you want to be able to pull and stretch it so that it looks even. One other thing I want to point out too is I use, I get these um, foam craft boards from the, uh, the dollar store and I use them for doing stuff like this because it doesn't matter if I get like glue or you know whatever I'm work working with on it because it'll you know it's a dollar I can throw it out when I'm done or throw it out when it's it's got too much stuff all over it the bulk. You can see that. Put a thin glue. I'm going to smooth it out. You can also use a low temp glue gun and then smooth it out with your finger, but I just find the map board does a better job of getting rid of the bulk of the hot glue. Now, um, two, um, I wouldn't suggest using like cardboard. I've seen people finish ornaments on like cardboard um, I think what you'll find is when you're wrapping your ornament around, the cardboard um, will the cardboard will warp on you. So that's why I suggest using map board. Oops. Okay, so you get the idea. fabric on it. So that is sort of, again, same process as the front. You're just going to cut out the bulk, cut out the ridges, and then you're going to seal it with the hot glue and basically remove the excess hot glue with a flat edge. So I'm going to go up and go ahead and finish this and then I'll be back to show you the next step. 
Okay, I'm back and I've finished adhering the ornament to the back or to the front of the map board. And I've used my pliers again to go around. And that's why we want the pliers without the ridges because you don't want to damage your fabric. So that's what it looks like. And you can see it sandwiches pretty, pretty tight together. There's no lumps or bumps. Um, so now what we want to do now is decide on our trim because, and we need to decide on our trim at this point because um, we're going to sandwich the hanger in between the two pieces when we glue them. So um, this one I've chosen, uh, this ribbon as my hanger, and I've chosen um, the cording. Like this is just a ready-made cording you can get at a fabric store. We don't need that right now. However, we do need our ribbon that we're gonna use for a hanger. And this is all just personal preference, the length of your hanger. I put, I don't know how much is this. Uh, it's about, you know, 12 inches, about six inches folded. I'm gonna cut it. Um, Yeah, that'll be that work. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to get this Eileen's quick dry tacky glue. And what I do is I just I use one of these foam brushes. was sealed over so I'm just gonna dump it out onto my plate here and you also want to have handy either clothespins or um, these are just magic clips keep those handy position how I want my hanger to go. Now typically what I do, because I want to be able to hang it on my tree, I kind of lay it like that. I try to center it as much as I can in the, the ornament and usually there's still a bit of tack from the spray adhesive that you can kind of just put it in place. them I want it too far apart the gap in the ribbon I, I don't like it overlapping because I like it to be able to hang it so that it the ornament faces out on the tree How does that look okay yeah that's good uh oh Okay, so once that's positioned, just kind of have to eyeball the center, really. Yeah, that's good. So once that pos is positioned, you're gonna take your brush and I just kind of Just kind of put it all over the tacky glue on the back of the ornament. Um, oops. 
and the, the quick dry tacky glue is really, really thick. Um, it's a little different than just the all purpose glue and you just want to kind of spread it around. Um, you want to get it to the edges, but you don't want it oozing when oozing out of the side of the ornament when you put the ornament together. You want to make sure you get it over top of the ribbon too. Okay, so once we've got the surface of the ornament covered with glue, just want a little bit more around the edges here. Um, now just going back to trim, you don't have to use cording on these ornaments. Um, I've used ruched ribbon, um, I've got some with wool, um, y you can definitely use cording, um, you, there's also, um, a cording drill, um, that you can purchase to make your own cording. Um, so there's lots of different trims. So what I'm going to do, what I did just now is I put the front of the ornament over top of the back it has the glue on it and I'm just going to line it up as best as I can. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magic clips and I'm going to put them around all the way around the perimeter of the ornament after I've lined it up. glue to this side so that's the good thing and then just a touch more glue Magic clips are going to go all the way around. And you don't have to worry about it compressing the foam or your ornament because it'll fluff back up once you take them, take them off. Get one up by the ornament here, or the ribbon. using a, a sewing pin because the sewing pin is thin enough to fit in the crack to put just a little bit more glue across the 
else there? I lost my light. Okay. So we're going to leave this for a few hours. For me, it's going to be 24 hours because it's 11 o'clock and I'm going to bed. Um, but yeah, leave it for a couple hours and um, I'll be back to show you the next the next step shortly. Okay, um, I'm back. We've let our ornament um, dry. I've taken the, the magic clips off and as you can see, it's, it's um, sealed on all of the corners. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put trim on our ornament and I'm going to show you how to put on um, this thicker trim so that the um, raw edges of the trim are um, is covered so you can't see it. Um, so when you normally work with like thin cording what you normally see is just people tie off um, the top similar to what I've done on this ornament. Um, but with this thicker cording um, that you can get at fabric stores, um, I mean, you could probably do it, but I don't know. In my opinion, it doesn't really look that nice. The knot is kind of big and it looks kind of cumbersome, um, especially with this thicker. You can get two types of thickness. I'm gonna use the smaller kind. Um, so the first thing you want to do is um, when you buy this at the store, they'll tape it before they cut it. And um, if, if you don't tape it before they cut it, your cording will unravel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it back. I don't want to trim all the tape off. I don't know if you can see that. There's tape on there. I don't want to trim all the tape. Um, but I want to cut it down so that there's there's a minimal amount because um, I'm going to conceal it with a piece of the ribbon, the same ribbon that I used for the hanger. So you want to um, cut, mm, what is that, I'll say about, mm, it's always better to cut more than less, right? So that's about four inches right there. And we're gonna we're gonna trim this down, obviously, once we get to the uh, once we glue our trim glue our trim on. So you want to center that. Turn around and show it. So you want to make sure your hanger is to the back of this ribbon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it over top, just position it like that, um, just to see how it looks. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little bit of the tacky glue and I'm just, you know, ideally you wanna have a uh, toothpick, but I just have a, a dressmaker's pin here going to put a little bit of glue right in that spot. And what you want to do is you want to get your sewing pins. Um, we're going to just, first we're going to put that down on top of the glue. Like so. 
And then we're going to put another little bit of glue just on the inside of the ribbon. Just a little bit, not a lot. And you want to center the starting of your cord in the middle of the ribbon because we need to have some space for the end of the ribbon to sit here. And I'll show you what, what I mean when we get there. So once you have your cording in place, you're gonna just stick the pin in there to hold it in place. And it doesn't wanna focus. Well, you can see that. There we go. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to take, oops, your toothpick again ideally a toothpick Get another pen. and you're gonna put oops dripping there and glue all in the seam there in the seam of your ornament. Okay, you can see that. And then what you're gonna do is just lay your ornament flat. flat. And you just kinda wanna put, if you have a little bit of glue kinda oozing out, just ease up on how much you're putting in the seam, I just put a tiny little bit too much, but it'll dry, this usually dries clear. So then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna hold your finger there. And then you're gonna continue to add glue in the seam. And then again, just put it down, hold it there. It'll tack up fairly quickly, like you won't have to hold it very long. Just a second. Okay, so then we're gonna do that all the way around our ornament. And I'm gonna um, stop the video and I'm gonna come back and show you how we finish off the other end. Okay, I'm back and as you can see I've glued all the way around the ornament uh, with the cording. Um, so now when you get to the top here, I'll just pull back the ribbon so you can see. You want to sort of line up, line up the edge with the other edge and just sort of measure and see where you need to wrap your tape around the cording because before we cut this, we need to put um, scotch tape around it first um, because if you cut it before doing that, um, your cording will unravel. Um, and this, is, this will hold true for cording that you make with a cording drill. So you always wanna, if you ever wanna cut it in the middle of your, um, length, you want to add um, masking tape. Okay, Oops. It's a little bit of a fiddly process. Oops. Let me try that again. I want to try and get as little of the masking tape on the side that I'm gonna cut and put on my ornament. So that's important when I'm measuring. Okay, so as you can see, I've taped my cording. And now I'm just gonna cut right at the point where this side of the cording meets with the other side. if you 
can see that there. See, it's just butted up right against the, the cording where we started it. So then what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna take a bit of glue, I'm just gonna lift that piece up, and I'm just gonna glue the remainder of that cording down. Gonna let that sit for a minute. Um, so yeah, you can get this. I'm gonna let that sit and dry for a minute, but yeah, you can get this cording pretty much at any fabric store, Notion store. Um, you don't have to use the ready-made cording. Um, you can make your own cording, um, like I did with this one, um, with a cording drill. Um, you can use wool. This one, um, I just did a single, this is like scrubby yarn. I just did a single crochet and then I just glued it to the perimeter of the ornament. Again, this one is wool as well. It's like a fuzzy chenille wool. I did single crochet. Or you can do like a ruched ribbon. And I just basically just gathered the ribbon and then I put pins and because it's matte board, you can just stick the pins in quite easily. Um, so there's lots of different options for ribbon. Okay, so now that we've left that, let that dry a little bit, you're gonna wanna take, you're gonna wanna take, and keep your pin in, you're gonna wanna take the ribbon that's at the back of your ornament first. Not the front, the back. Okay, we're gonna work with this first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pin out now, because that side's probably pretty dry. We're gonna wrap it over to the front of the ornament. Okay, and we're gonna measure to see where we need to cut. So we want to cut right where it folds over and meets the edge of the trim. So let me do that. Okay. So I've just cut it so it meets the other side of where the, the front of the trim is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I'm just gonna put it over top of that cellophane tape. And also a little bit in this crevice here, just a little bit. You don't wanna saturate it because that piece of you don't want it soaking through to the front of the ribbon. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over. And then I'm gonna take a pin and just tuck that piece of ribbon in like so. Now you don't want to have too much overhang and you want to make sure it's tucked in well because you're going to pull this ribbon to the back and do the pretty much the exact same thing. Okay. So once we've done that and it's kind of how we like it, glue in here. Oops. 
I'm just putting a bit more glue on the underside of the ribbon just to make sure that it's on there pretty good. going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take the ribbon that was in the front. We're going to fold it over covering all. You want to make sure all the cellophane or the scotch tape is is covered and we're going to measure and we we're going to cut it off at the back and you want it to line up with the the edge of your cording because we're going to tuck it um, we're going to tuck it in behind there as best as we can. take the glue and I'm just going to put it the top side of the, the ribbon that we just glued down. Fold it over. One thing you might want to do too is put a little bit of fray away on your ribbon after you cut it, um, just so that the ribbon doesn't fray. Okay. And I'm just going to tuck it under using a pin. As you can see, the tape is covered. And then because of our hanger, you're not going to see the back anyways, but the back is all covered and tucked in behind the, in behind, oh, it needs to dry. Just a second. I'm going to stick a pin in so that it'll stay in place while it dries. dry it so I'm gonna keep the pin in. Um, and that's our ornament finished. So hopefully this has helped um, you finish your ornaments. Um, you can also use this method for things like box tops or um, really anything really. Um, you can also 
use just do the one side of your ornament and adhere it to something like a you know um, something that you get from Michaels or your craft store um, it's um, it's a pretty versatile uh, method for finishing uh, your stitching anyways take care and um, we'll see you again bye